Hello there, welcome back to the Gassels. We missed last uh, last week, but we're back. Gassels podcast, how we doing, Travis? Doing all right. We're doing decent, I reckon. So we waited a day because we were supposed to have a pretty big news day. I guess we still kind of did, but uh, I guess the big <laughs> news was supposed to be Truex retiring, but so far, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Well, so, Pacris put out a tweet last night that said that he had confirmed that Truex was racing in 2021, but automatically that doesn't answer everybody's question because one of the big rumors was that he was going to run 2021 and then be done so i guess it's still it's yet to be determined our luck will upload this and then he'll announce it like tonight i think that's what <laughs> didn't that happen with uh jordan and hamlin didn't uh, we, uh yeah i think so i think yeah. we put out a podcast and then right after it they announced that so we were hoping it'd come out earlier today but uh alfredo's going to front row which i guess is good for him and then uh People are storming the Capitol. So it's still a, a busy news day, just not one that we thought we'd see. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, I want to get to that Capitol thing here in a minute because I'm, I'm out of the loop with that shit. I just, I, I, got I just, think we all are. It's I, like, I, all right. First off, this fucking Alfredo thing, good for him. I'm really happy for him. And, uh, I'm excited to see what he can do because he hasn't really raced a whole lot. He's like, he's like the Quinn now. He's like the next Quinn. It just, he's uh, been in a little bit more competitive. <laughs> It's, yeah. he's just been kind of here and there and oh shit now he's got a cup ride um uh, yeah i'm ex uh the, the biggest thing i'm excited for is just a another new face on the grid i guess just kind of shake shit up you know what i mean you put yeah. some good runs together or hey he'll give us a couple of good time cautions hopefully something like that but i hope front row will uh continue the trajectory they're on with mcdowell and what john hunter was able to do when he didn't wreck yeah um, and because i think i think alfredo's better than john hunter i think that um, even though we've never seen him in a full season of any kind, he's done really good. I mean, from what I've seen, I saw somebody shitting on him in the replies saying, Oh man, another weekly caution. And somebody actually whooped out the stats. So it was actually, I love good head wobblers. Sometimes there's good head wobblers and this yeah. was a good head wobbler. And, uh, said that he's been in two crashes or two cautions, uh, his entire Xfinity career. And one was him getting out of the PJ one and brushing the wall. And then the other one was, uh, all guy are almost killing him at Kansas <laughs> when he flipped him. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's a lot better than a lot of these guys in Xfinity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't have the stats, but I mean, just thinking about it, I mean, he's not one of those guys who really put in the, uh, you know, he's always kind of wrecking or having trouble. He's always honestly kept his nose clean for the most part, except for that fucking Kansas shit. But, uh, yeah, and that yeah. wasn't even his fault. That yeah. Was on the apron going into one. Yeah, it shit happens. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited, man. Honestly, I think he can do pretty solid in that. Cup ride. I mean, the only problem though is he's going to be going from big time Xfinity to that fucking shitty cup shit. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. He's going to have some learning to do with that fucking aero package shit, but uh, the mile and a half. But uh, yeah, it should be a good time, man. I'm looking forward to it uh, and seeing what he can do. All right, this fucking capital thing. What the hell is going on? <laughs> because, like, I looked, I, I, I hopped onto Twitter and I see everybody talking about how they're disgusted to be Americans today. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that? What? What? Why? What, what? What do we do? Yeah. So I don't fully like understand because I gave up politics a while ago. Like I still have like my opinions, but my opinions basically are like everybody's fucking awful. Um, apparently, it's pro-Trump people who are mad about the election, and so the the Senate runoff in Georgia didn't go well for them last night. The Democrats won it, and. I guess that sent them over the edge. They were having some sort of march here, and I guess somewhere along the way they decided they'd storm the Capitol building while the election results were being certified. I think it's fitting my cat's and, having a shit during this talk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so they stormed in there. Some guy, though, uh, I deleted I made a meme, and then I deleted it because I, I knew my luck, the way it goes, this guy would end up killing somebody, and then my mentions would blow up or something. But there was this guy, and he had a red, white, and blue face paint, a fur jacket with no shirt on and like one of those Viking hats on <laughs> and he was storming it. And I said, I don't know if this guy's looking for the political party or if he's starting to revolt on behalf of a new uh, generation of Vikings. <laughs> but he's my hero. And he was running, or I don't think I called him my hero, but something along those lines. Uh, but he ran in there with a Viking hat. Some dude sold the podium from the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, did, I saw that picture. That's the funniest shit I've ever seen. I couldn't believe that. Like... <laughs> Like, here's my thing. Okay, they stormed the Capitol. They had already put all these people into, like, hiding. So, like, they got in there, and I guess it's yet to be confirmed what they did when they were in there. But right now, with what I know, 
it looks like they just kind of went in there and stood around like, okay, we're in here. What do we do next? You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, I don't really, this is just really stupid. They're, uh, people want to call them domestic terrorists and I'd say, okay, yes, they are, but damn, they're pretty bad at it. Cause I don't <laughs> think they've done anything, but rack themselves up a bunch of felonies and make their entire political uh, group look like a bunch of idiots. So I, I, that's all I know. I don't know for sure. I'm sure we'll have more information by the time this comes out. But the guy still at the podium was pretty funny. <laughs> that dude scanning the room is like, what can I take? Yeah. <laughs> he looked over there in the corner. That looks cool. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly like the facial expression he's got in that one picture, man. It's fucking funny. Yeah. He's waving in the one I saw. He's waving at him. And uh, Oh, it just popped up on Twitter again. Like, this guy... <laughs> obviously you can't sell this so yeah is he just gonna have this thing in his living room now or maybe the man cave i, I mean i i guess <laughs> when the grandkids come over one day <laughs> yeah hey yeah. kids let me let me tell you a story whoops out Circa that bad 2021 boy. i stole the congressional podium <laughs> <laughs> oh it's, man it's a hell of a uh souvenir yeah i'm just i'm just scrolling through this now man it's all kinds of shit I uh, I just man, I, I don't even know what to say about it. It just I, I just find it funny. Everybody got in there and everybody standing around. Like, what are you guys doing? Looking at the paintings or what? Yeah, that that's what I don't. Just a bunch of damn idiots. It's weird. It was the point there. <laughs> just a, I don't know, waste of a day. I guess whatever they're. What were they doing today? Uh, certifying election results or whatever. And that's another like. I, I guess I get if you're like passionate and you think the election was stolen, whatever. I don't really care, but I don't know. I, I really don't know what they think this was accomplishing, especially like after it had been, they had already like cleared everybody when they started storming it. So I, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking or doing. Bunch of damn idiots. Like I said, uh, pretty much like I say every other time something like this happens. Bunch of damn idiots. That's fun to say. Bunch of damn idiots. Bunch of damn idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you know who summed it up perfectly? Dave Portnoy. I love Dave Portnoy. He said, 95% of people in this country are normal. The extreme right sucks and the extreme left suck. Both sides filled with lunatics, crazies, and morons. And almost all politicians are hypocrites who manipulate these idiots for personal gain. And then right about there, when I got to that part, I was like, damn, I wish he'd run for president. But <laughs> being Dave, he goes, and no, I won't run for president. I'd rather die. <laughs> Well, there you have it. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyways, and we had, uh, did you, I, I about forgot that we had a, we had a new year uh, celebrate. Well, we didn't really have a celebration, but, you know, we're in a new year now. We did in Mooncar. Yeah, we did do that. I forgot about that. I That was such a weird night because usually, you know, I just sit there and watch the TV for three hours of fucking random groups of musical people and yeah. all of a sudden they drop a ball and it's a new year but um i didn't do any of that shit because i was racing i don't remember how it went either <laughs> uh you flipped your dick off all right well like bad <laughs> you got hooked so you actually didn't get hooked they wrecked in front of you and you hit somebody in the nose and it did that thing where it flung you right and you went up into the turn four wall head on and got hit at the same time and you flipped like a son oh, of a bitch yeah i remember that turn now. four yeah, <laughs> that was into your night, but you did make it. We had some poor bastards who didn't make it to twenty twenty one in the moon car race. Oh man! And we started at like eleven thirty. I think the green flag was at like eleven thirty five or something. <laughs> there were some people out of the race before twenty twenty one. Oh no! I, uh, yeah. dude, I uh, this uh, man. When did I get it? The, the, ever since I got my PS Five, man, I, I've I've been having a hard time getting shit done. I ain't gonna lie, man. I gotta tell you about this fucking thing. It's it's like I think it's from the it's from the future. It's incredible. Ooh. It's uh, I didn't really know what it. I, obviously, I knew what it looked like, but it's it does. It, you never really like get a grasp on what it is until you get it in your hands. And it actually looks kind of cool. It's got these like LEDs on the side, and it kind of lights up a little bit, and it's pretty fucking cool. I'm not gonna lie. The best thing about it though is, um, I was really excited for it, but I didn't really take it into consideration playing that damn thing. It like there's no load times like there is with any of the other consoles, so it's like you just you just go from one thing to another, and it's really weird playing a console like that. So like I play a lot of <clears throat> one of the, well one of the things I was really excited to play with this thing is the the 2K. Uh, my NBA mode, and I think I talked about it. It's like 
the same thing as NF the Madden franchise, but you could just do like nine like ninety percent more with it. Like <laughs> it's incredible. Honestly, it's it's like one of the, t the truly good things 2K has done with the the 2K uh, NBA 2K games. And uh, so what I like to do, especially now since the Thunder are rebuilding. Uh, they have a shitload of draft picks and they have a bunch of young prospects and stuff on the roster. So you can, it's like the team, the go-to team now to rebuild. So, uh, you know, I've done it a couple of times now you get in there and, uh, you know, you get your draft picks, you sim your seasons. The biggest thing though, is like you, you basically just sim a full 82 game season and it usually takes a long time to do that shit on PS4, PS5. It's just like, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It just goes from one game to another, just rapid fire and boom, you're done the season. It's so weird. I got um I got uh, Spider Man too, and that's been really fun. I never played any of the Spider Man games, but I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you it's actually pretty fucking fun. It's like uh, doing the the web shooter shit through the fucking you know you're going through New York and shit. It's pretty fucking cool. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but uh, other than that, it's uh even like the the like menu sounds and shit. It has like this like futuristic uh, <laughs> menu sound. And I, I just, every once in a while, I just put my PS5 on and just listen to it if I'm just sitting here for some reason. <laughs> oh, so speaking of this, my brother, I was on the phone with him last night and he's trying to get an Xbox. How, like, how did you go about getting your PS4? You did it all online, right? Um, yeah, I, uh, I see, I don't know what, how they're doing. I know Xbox is just a little bit easier, but not much. Uh, the biggest thing was I, uh, on, there's a bunch of Twitter accounts that are dedicated to when, uh, you know, just websites are going to restock and stuff. Okay. Um, that, and, uh, I'm sure there's probably a Reddit for it too. I use the, uh, the PS5 direct, uh, or whatever the fuck it was, PS5 restock Reddit, uh, between that and all the Twitter accounts, uh, it gives you an idea when, when they're going to restock and then you just got to outlast the bots. But I got lucky cause the way I did it. Instead of just doing that whole add to cart thing, uh, the one Twitter account I had had a link, uh, like a super special link that yeah, you clicked. That. Yeah, and it, it would just automatically add to the cart. And I got lucky doing it that way. And it, uh, I just got to go straight through and got it. But um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, you know, it was funny because I'd been searching for like a month and people, uh, you know, people were getting lucky and they were announcing how they were, uh, you know, getting rid of the subreddit now. They don't need it anymore. And I was like, man. I want to do the same. I finally got mine though, and I'm like, I, I unfollowed all those Twitter accounts. I unsubscribe from the Reddit. I don't even know anything about drops anymore. It's really nice, man. <laughs> I went a month, man. I went a month spending just fucking all kinds of hours sitting there on my computer refreshing shit from day day in day out doing the PS direct queues and shit. Uh, it doesn't seem real, but it's fucking. I, I tell you what though, it is really fucking cool. I think it was worth it for sure. Uh, I want to get some more games. That's the only problem with getting new consoles that there's not a whole lot of games out. Um, that you can like fully take advantage of, I guess, with the PS5. But um, I'm so fucking excited uh, that I got all this shit together. I got that uh, that new TV to match it with the the 4K high hertz and shit. It's oh, dude, I've been waiting years to do this shit, man. It's fucking, it's all coming together, and I've just been fat assing it on the couch and playing fucking the 2K and shit. Oh man, I did my face scan. It came out so bad. I don't know if you. I, I think I said it to you. It's so fucking bad, and all that I took a bunch of screenshots from my cutscenes and stuff. Uh, I, I want to do a like a, a Twitter, uh, just a thread, I guess, and put all the because uh, <laughs> it puts you in all these awkward scenarios where you're just like you're on the subway or something, and you're you're talking to whoever you are in the cutscene with this ridiculously like half burnt face of mine that looks like I also ran into a wall, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you're sitting there on the subway, and it's so funny because later I added on an afro. Uh, as big as an afro as you could so like in certain scenes where you're having like this one-on-one -on -one with whoever you're talking to it'll have this camera where it, you know it's kind of sits behind you and it's aimed at who you're talking to and you get one of those kind of scenes my afro is so fucking big that the camera like the the hair sticks out in front of the camera angles <laughs> so it's like you said some of the cut scenes you can't even see who the fuck you're talking to <laughs> It's so fucking stupid. That and my character is 7-3. I always make a uh, center because I think that's the most fun position to play in 2K. I've done this shit since fucking 2K 12 or 13, I think. So every year I've made a center and uh, it just keeps on getting better and better. Dude, I don't know how long they've done this fucking face scan thing, but it is fucking garbage. I don't get it. The first time they did it was like 2014 or 15 or something like that. And I had my damn Xbox One with the little camera thing that came with it. 
and I had that shit stacked on top of boxes and stuff, trying to get natural sunlight so I could get it to work. The thing with it now is, back then, it did, it just wouldn't fucking work. Like, you'd scan, and you'd go through all the tips, and it'd be like, ah, wasn't good enough, we can't complete your face scan. Now it's like, ah, eh, fuck it. We, we got some idea of what your face looks like. We threw it all together in this app. Uh, cr click a button, and then it, it does the, the shit, and, uh, and then it just gives you a half-burnt, uh, very fucked up face <laughs> so um yeah thanks for that too i think it's pro uh, part of the problem is with my phone they, they make you do it through an app now and they have like this little app and then you can open up your camera and then it scans your face the problem though is when i do it on my phone i i do the front face and camera it's like it i don't know if it's a problem with the app or or something with my camera it like stretches my camera so it kind of like makes my head more like bowling pin shaped and i think that's what fucks up the scan a little bit but uh anyways that's what that's what i've been doing what have you been doing <laughs> i've been uh so i was really considering going on a cross-country road trip um but the morning i woke up to do it davy davis davy's doobies got through to me because he's done it before he's like you need to have more time so you can enjoy it and then it hit me i got like three and a half weeks coming up in may and I don't have anything to do, so I'm going to do it then. Other than that, I've just been, like, planning moon car and stuff. We're trying to do some moon car events here soon. Um, Sweet. Oh, speaking of which, in February, so what we're going to do in February, it's going to have to be midweek because everybody and their brothers trying to do stuff in February, but we're going to do a midweek uh, Daytona 250 with the ARCA cars with, like, a mid-2000s theme. So oh, get cool. Everybody, like, running that shit, but we're going to uh, – do it'll probably be none of this is like for sure yet but the plan is to have it like ten dollars to enter uh and we're kind of talking to some people about getting some sponsors and stuff and trying to make the purse pretty big uh but there'll be pole qualifying duels uh depending on how many people sign up we might need more than just duels but uh you have to race your way in and then we'll have 43 people in the main event and it'll be 100 oh, laps man. at daytona so that'll be pretty good uh and hopefully it'll be for a, a substantial amount of money. Oh, um, but other than that, we're just been rocking and rolling, doing the nightly stuff. iRacing's posted us a couple of times, so yeah, that's pretty you, cool. Yeah, fucking big time, man. How about that shit? Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I would have never thought that they would choose Mooncar to be posting, but they've done it uh, twice, and we were in the best of 2020 three times. So. Yeah, that was cool. I only watched a couple of... Uh, I watched... Uh, Cause I came in when you we all were watching it that first time, and I uh, I scrubbed through it a little bit. It was pretty cool. I didn't I didn't know they were doing all that shit. But, uh, <laughs> you made it with the yeah. uh, drove finish. Yeah, I didn't make make it for any good reasons. I don't think <laughs> <laughs> that one still haunts me, man. That was so fucking stupid. Yeah. Oh man, but it was worth it though. I should have won that race like two laps before, but uh, I just got hung up behind Gary and that one chicane. I was gonna get by him, and he like got stuck on my the right front oh, of my truck yeah. or some shit. And it's it just like, it's funny how those races work out, though, man. And then it, it, it came all the way down to that fucking finish, man. Fucking nuts. <laughs> but, um. Oh, man. Uh, speaking, going back to the, the capital situation, Barry McCockinner on Twitter, you mm -hmm. know him? Mm hmm. He tweets I'm sitting here watching the news about the terrorists raiding the capital in complete disgust as there's a drive into deep left field by. <laughs> I can't even read it. <laughs> Field and that'll be a home run and so that'll make it a 4-0 ball game i don't know if i'm gonna be putting on this headset again do you remember that please tell me you remember <laughs> yeah yeah it took me a second but now i remember <laughs> oh my god that's one thing like man i hate social media during times like this because they make everything seem like it's the end of the world but i love social media in times like this because of people like that who could make a meme out of literally literally anything mm -hmm. and uh there's been some good ones. I expect Podium Man will get a get his fair share of. He, you know who he is. He's like the remember the kid who stole the Legos during the uh, the riots up there in uh, where the hell was it Minnesota or whatever. Oh no, I don't remember that. But that's a smart so kid. They were looting a Target, and they were like destroying it. I think it ended up getting burned down. But in the background, while they're tearing up some of the self checkouts. You see this little skinny white kid, probably 15, 16, I don't know, he could be a little older, sneaking out with both arms wrapped around a big old Lego set. <laughs> and, and 
<laughs> like he just like that was his mission. He's like, this is my chance. And I don't. You ever check the price on one of those things? I uh, dude, I was just thinking the exact same fucking thing. If I I don't condone looting, but if I ever looted, it'd be some fucking Lego sets. I'm gonna tell you that. That's exactly what I told my uncle because I think he posted it on Facebook or something. And I was he was talking about something, and I was like, look, because he just had a kid. Well, just had a kid. Kids over a year old, but. I was like, you just wait till he starts playing with Legos. You'll understand this kid's pain. <laughs> oh, man. I, dude, I, I thought about that uh, the last couple of months, man. I've really wanted to get a uh, like a big Lego set, uh, especially Lego Star Wars. They got this big fucking uh, Empire ship, uh, but it's like 700 bucks. But it's fucking huge, though. Is but that I, the one Macy J put together on stream? I don't know. But it's like, it's fucking huge. But it's still seven hundred bucks. I really want to get one, but I don't want to fucking spend the money. But like, I'm 22 now, and like I've played with Legos my entire life, and I make my own fucking money. I got my own fucking money. I want to buy a big fucking Lego set. That's all I ever wanted to do in my life. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it fucking soon. I just, uh, oh man, I'm torn. I just, I wanna, I don't know. <laughs> one of these, one of these fucking months is gonna show up. I'm gonna spend my hey. whole weekend doing that shit, man. Stimulus check. Get a wait for that. I'm sure we'll get a I, yeah. I already got it. I got my six hundred fucking. Oh. Unless we, unless I get a, a two G's coming in, I guarantee you some of it's gonna go to Lego dot com. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I got I got my six hundred bucks, and it just kind of quietly deposited it in my account, and uh, now it's just kind of sitting there, and it'll probably be uh, well, it's already been shipped into now with some bills, but uh, yeah, it's kind of not as fun as two thousand dollars. I hope I get that shit. Is that still possible? I don't pay attention to shit. Uh, what, what's possible? A two thousand dollar check. Is that possible? I'm sure it is at some point. I don't, I don't know. I mean, at a certain point, I think they'll realize that it's not really going to help anything. <laughs> but, I mean, $2,000 is $2,000. Yeah. I'm fine with it. If they want to send me $2,000, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I, like, I've never really done any Lego sets. And oh, I kind of, like, I've been close to buying some. Um, but, like, really, all the cool ones are hundreds of dollars. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want some yeah. Little, itsy bitsy one yes man at suit when i when i was young that's all i did was play ps2 and if i wasn't playing ps2 i was building something i had a bunch of lego sets um and i had not even just legos i had that like connect shit uh there was a bunch of like different kinds of build deep stuffs <laughs> and there was uh there was like i had this big roller coaster set it was i think it was called connects or, or something like that um, it was a lot worse to build with because it was just like these plastic bits and they snapped in. Oh, and it, yeah, it just I had wasn't, some of them. They, they weren't, yeah, they weren't as fun to work with as Legos. But um, dude, I had this, um, I had this like Lego City set of some sort where I had like a plane and uh, <clears throat> you could build it up and put people in there. And of course, I'd just fucking throw it in the air and crash it and <laughs> throw it, in, throw it on the floor and just see how it would <laughs> disperse and then build it up again and then <laughs> and throw it off the steps again and then yeah, just kind of, I don't know, dick around with <laughs> it. Fucking stupid. I had a couple of Lego Star Wars uh, uh, ships and stuff I'd build. Oh, dude. Now I'm talking about Legos. I'm, I'm about to hit up Lego.com and see if they got that. Oh, man. Hey. I, I, I'm scrolling through it right now, looking at some of them. For 550 bucks, you can get the Roman Colosseum. They had one uh, that was pretty cool. It was like a, a grand piano uh, piano you could buy and put together. I thought that looked pretty cool, but again, that was like 300 bucks. Do the cars that they have do they actually roll? Yeah. Oh, I'll well, be damn. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They uh, yeah, they have some like Lego like oh yeah, right here this fucking Ferrari GTE car. They have some yeah. cool shit like that. I've never built one of those before. Um, but that looks pretty fucking cool. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Star Wars stuff. So like, I have, I want to get some Star Wars shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you see, that's some, I'm a fucking loser. I don't watch anything. <laughs> hey, it's never too late, man. There's a lot of good shit out there. Yeah, this yeah. fucking, uh, it's out of stock. Oh, wow. So they got, yeah, two of them. I didn't realize this was more expensive. The Millennium Falcon, which is $800. Jesus fucking Christ. How big Can't is it? It looks pretty fucking big. I mean, it's pretty fucking cool. But I want this Imperial Star Destroyer because I think it's bigger and it just it looks badass. <laughs> and it's fucking massive. I've seen some pictures of it. And I think I got a desk I can put it on if I build it. But Lord knows I'm going to hear that crash on the floor with fucking mustache. Honestly, it might be too big for her to knock it over. So I don't know. Either way, I want one of those fucking things. When you guys got one of these, 
let me fucking know how cool it was because I want to get one. I just I don't want to spend yeah. seven hundred bucks. It's out of stock right now, so that, that's gonna save me. Yeah, I don't even. Oh boy, did you hear that voice crack? I don't <laughs> even care about uh, Star Wars, but this looks fucking cool. <laughs> like I would consider getting it. Ah, uh, yeah. There's been, it's been forever since I like actually did a Lego set build, but there's nothing like pulling out the fucking directions and everything comes in little plastic bags. You kind of divvy it up there and you get it all sorted. Then you just start. Take a while though, man. Just how fucking like there's a there's a lot of pieces to that, man. But it's uh oh, I'm gonna do it soon. I'm gonna do it soon. Do you ever play the uh, the old uh, Nintendo? Not Nintendo. Lego. Uh... Oh, they did come on the Nintendo DS. I don't know what else they came on, but uh, the Lego theme games, like there's Lego Batman, Lego Indiana Jones is mm-hmm. my favorite. Yeah, Lego oh, Star Wars, God. man. <laughs> I never played Lego Star Wars, but Lego Indiana Jones, I loved that game. <laughs> I think I had that too. I don't know what I had it on, but um, uh, I might have. Did they have one for the Wii? I'm pr- I'm sure they did. I'm pretty sure they. Did. I know they did actually. Yes, they did. I'm pretty sure I had it for the Wii. If I did, um, I had. Uh, <clears throat> I don't remember which one it was. I had one or two Lego Star Wars games, and I played the shit out of those. Uh, those are really fucking cool. Um, uh, what were the other ones you said? Lego Batman. I played one of those once. I think I played a. <laughs> I did a. Uh, way back when I started to play through on the Lego movie game. <laughs> that was like 2014. I just remember that shit. Uh, that was a pretty, that was a game. I don't think I finished it, but I, I remember I recorded a couple episodes of that. I wonder if there's any of those still out there in one of my drives. I think there are somewhere, but <laughs> I don't know why I have that on Steam. I think I got it on Steam. But the yeah, Lego, either. those Lego oh. games are fun. Are there Lego games on Steam still though? Ah, uh, yeah, everything's on Steam. Oh, you fucking kid! Oh my god! Oh my god! They've got Lego Indiana Jones. Oh man. <laughs> no we're doing tonight. Yeah. How much is it? Nineteen ninety nine, god damn. I guess it ain't that bad. Well, they got oh, man. Lego. oh, Lego Star Wars the sky. I don't know. <laughs> I might not meet these requirements here. Windows XP or Vista. Intel Platinum three. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty six megabytes of RAM. Oh man. Uh that's gonna be kinda close. hundred and twenty eight megabyte graphics card with shader model 2.0 capability direct x9 and four gigabytes of storage we're gonna be pushing it <laughs> oh man they i guess this is uh this this says coming soon but it also says release date 2020 the, the lego star wars the skywalker saga and it looks pretty fucking cool just going off to screenshots i'm sure it won't look like that in the game but pretty close maybe i don't know either way i don't know the the thing about the lego games is that they uh they're always pretty because at least if you're going after like star wars or something like that they usually keep it pretty accurate but they always add that like lego humor in there that keeps you on your toes yeah (laughs) i fucking love it man it's so great that's another thing i need to write that shit down i need to play one of those i used to love the uh commercials where for whatever reason they'd always turn around and go hey i don't know why they did it but (laughs) He just turn around, and throw up his little circular hand, or I don't even know, like the c- half cylinder, half pipe hands. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> did you ever watch the Lego Movie? Because I think they made uh, two. Yeah. Of them. yeah, yeah. Well, I watched the first one. Uh, I never, I didn't know there was a second one, but I used to love the first one. That damn song, the everything yeah. is up. Uh, God, that was stuck <laughs> in my head for like two years after watching. I was like, I was in high school when I watched that movie, I think, and I fucking loved it. Yeah, that movie's pretty. Uh, it's 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 corny, but it's got that Lego charm to it. It's just kind of funny, and I enjoy oh, it's it. fantastic. I love it. <laughs> I I'm gonna watch it again now. I'll probably watch it tonight. I love that movie. Speaking of movies, I finally got to watch in uh, Wonder Woman, the new one that came out. That one that was a, a Rona movie that got delayed a bit, and it ended up being a Christmas movie. You know, the one bright side to uh, <clears throat> the uh, the whole like I, I mean everything got delayed and shit, but now like they're starting to release movies and shit like on apps like this one came out on hbo max so if you had a subscription hey congrats you can watch it so it was pretty cool uh another uh well first off yeah that one it wasn't as good as the first i heard that shit going in and i was like i think they're right i don't know it didn't have quite the uh i don't know what it didn't have but it didn't have the 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 oomph. it didn't keep me as entertained as the first one i guess i don't know this one i just i didn't like the villain and the villain uh interestingly enough was played by the same dude who plays the mandalorian old pedro 
He was, uh, I, I thought he was pretty good. I just, I didn't like the concept of it. I thought it was kind of stupid. And I don't, I don't really want to spoil it, but I mean, if you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. Anyways, oh. I'm about to spoil it. So, so basically this guy is, uh, he, uh, <clears throat> he gets like this magic stone and, uh, he, uh, so like it, it'll grant you a wish no matter what it is. And it, uh. He he his wish his wish is to become the stone and he just like it, he absorbs it and then he starts granting wishes to people and then it makes the world go crazy and then it, it, oh! it's, it's it's something I don't know I just thought it was kind of dumb. <laughs> damn, they were spraying those damn people storming the capital. Well, they weren't storming the capital, but they were spraying some people down there trying to cross some sort of barricade, and somebody threw a like a bottle or something and hit one of those cops right square in the face. Oh man, what are you watching? Like a live stream or some shit? Yeah, I'm watching Fox News and CNN and then uh, CNBC. I got, <laughs> I got them all up. <laughs> um, oh, they whooped up the dude. Uh, the, I don't know what agency this is. Apparently, it's not National Guard. I think it's FBI. But they look like they're out of a video game and they mean business. Oh. Now they're in the Capitol, so this could get ugly. Well, really I was about good. to say it's about five o'clock, so it's about closing time here. <clears throat> but well, the, the curfew. Day. They did a DC curfew at six o'clock. So uh, oh, all right, yeah. Shit. So between getting off at five and having to be home by six, I'm sure a lot of these people are sick of their shit. <laughs> yeah. I'd say so. <laughs> Please, they'll they'll come over the intercom. Uh, the the capital will be closing in fifteen minutes. Please <laughs> steal your last uh, piece of memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> if there's any paintings on the wall. Yeah, any um, paintings or podiums or office chairs you'd like, please grab them now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if anybody listening saw Wonder Woman, let me know what you thought of it. I didn't think it was all that great. I, I mean, it was all right. <clears throat> I just didn't think it was as, as good as the first one. Uh, I also watched another new movie release, uh, and uh, <clears throat> it had been a while since I've seen a Disney movie, but uh, that Soul movie came out. Uh, and, uh, I honestly really like that. I would tell you something though. The, uh, the Disney movies now are fucking insane. Like the, the level of detail of them, it's just, it's like, it's like you're watching, uh, like live action, but then they like, then they got these little cartoony people in them. You throw them into this, like a really realistic, like setting, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's like. They'll have these scenes where where you got like these goofy looking characters, and then just like the backgrounds of them are just like so re- realistically detailed with the animation and shit. It's it's fucking weird to look at, but um, it was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. it had had a nice charm to it. Had a nice Disney lesson at the end, and um, <laughs> you know I I was pretty good. It was another uh, one like, again. If you have uh, Disney Plus, you can watch this shit, and uh, I thought it was quite good. Um, Anyways, that's my movie watching endeavors. <laughs> I need to watch some more though. I've been slacking, but uh, those are some two new ones. That's man. That's once again I talked about it before, but man, that's, that's been the shittiest part about COVID. Man, all the the movie and and television stuff that got delayed. Been uh, hurting for some Marvel stuff, man. Finally, that stuff's gonna start rolling out soon with the first uh, Disney Plus show at the WandaVision shit uh, in January, which is actually coming up January 16th, I think it's supposed to come out or something like that, 21st, I don't fucking know something like that um, still waiting on fucking uh, the Black Widow movie that was supposed to come out um, uh, in May last year <laughs> I think it's supposed to come out in May this year uh, so uh, yeah, anyways uh, we got anything else to talk about we want to get into some mailbag action here I'm ready to dig into this mailbag right here yeah let's see what's going on over there all right for those of you who haven't figured it out yet ask moonhead at gmail.com we say it before the mailbag <laughs> after the mailbag and put it in the youtube description but... yeah can we take a second to talk about uh i know you have and i know i have gotten a lot of questions about what the mailbag email is but like how do you know about the mailbag without knowing what the mailbag is <laughs> that's yeah that's what i don't understand if you know there's a mailbag you have to know the email because we say it before and after and it's in the youtube description the only thing i can think about is if i don't know maybe you skip the email part somehow magically on the other platforms and don't read i i don't know but ask moonhead at gmail.com there you go. uh first one is from slow mo slow motion sorry long time supporter by the way. yeah yeah hey travis and cozy i've got two questions for you this one's mainly for cozy have you ever considered doing old F1 games as a series, or are you going to do more retro NASCAR games in the future? Oh, hey, I talked about that on stream last night. Um, 
I haven't decided yet, but I, I'll probably get around to it eventually. Yes. Uh, I have F1 says and six written down. I was told that was pretty good. And then like the, uh, the, somebody told me last night, it was still like 99 to 2002, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll get around to it eventually, probably. When I say eventually, it might be four years down the road, but uh, that's the plan eventually, you know what I mean? We'll fit it in there one way or another. That's the only thing, though, is like if I'm going to do it, I don't know how I'm going to do it because I don't know if I want to commit myself to a full season of playing that shit or if I just want to do a one-off, like, hey, this is what the game's about, you know? Um, I don't know. So think about it. Uh, and then he says, and for both of you, what was the most embarrassing moment you've ever experienced? Mine would be I shat myself in first grade and my class had to wait like 10 minutes while my teacher cleaned it up. Keep up the great work. I shit myself in fourth grade. Y'all are, most of y'all have heard that story. Have I ever? I've told that on the podcast, right? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I shit myself in fourth grade. That was pretty embarrassing. Um, there's this chick uh, I had a crush on. And I don't remember what grade it was, but basically she told me to come to some basketball game with her and it was like a a school basketball game. And I got there and I was like, believe it or not, like I, I used to be like really socially anxious and like shy and like, I didn't want to talk to people, didn't want to meet people, didn't want to do anything. Now I'm like the complete opposite. I'll talk to anybody. But uh, I got there and I remember like we saw each other and then I just kind of stood there. And like, never sat with her, never talked to her, nothing. And I like, I don't know. I just like anxiety out. And that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty yeah. embarrassing because she was really hot too. That was the thing. She was really hot. Um, like she. I mean, she's still pretty hot. Like, I still see her from time to time. But yeah, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty awkward. Um, trying to think. There was more to that story though. There was a lot more. I like I embarrassed myself several times with that <laughs> that chick, and things <laughs> never worked out. But uh, yes. other than that, uh, farting in the the third grade that I told y'all about, where it was the uh, I tried to blame it on the air conditioning unit, and uh, my teacher came to my defense, which just made things worse. That was pretty bad. Um, I can't think of anything else. What about you? Uh, <clears throat> well. First off, I've embarrassed myself a lot on, on live stream and, and other stuff because I've been doing this shit for a while. But uh, the one that sticks out to me is a memory I thought I suppressed, but I didn't. Uh, comes out of the seventh grade. <clears throat> and, uh, man, I don't want to relive this, but here we go. <laughs> uh, so uh, I had the dumb idea of running for uh, vice president or whatever in the seventh grade. Uh, I don't even remember how that shit worked, but eighth grade you could run as president. Seventh grade you could run as vice president. And I think there's only two people who ran for it. The other dude who ran was a lot more popular than me. Uh, and uh, But we were still good friends. I just knew he was going to win because it was a popularity contest as it was. Either way, I still ran because I don't give a shit. And I got up there, uh, and we had to do a speech in front of the whole class. Uh, not, the, not the whole class, whole school. Uh, to be fair, it was, it was Catholic school, so there, you know, it wasn't like a shitload of people. But it was still, you know, eh, still a fair amount of people. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were giving our speeches and shit. And uh, I made it almost all the way through until I got uh, hung up trying to say successful and I ended up just stuttering sex like 10 times in a row. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, I, I got to the point so bad where I started laughing uh, out of pure terror. And um, and that's just kind of how it ended. And I went back and sat down and, on the stage and um, I remember walk in the halls uh, after that and some girl came up to me uh, actually we were walking together uh, me and the buddy I was running against and uh, I don't know we, we ended up talking to this chick she was like yeah I actually voted for you just because I felt bad for you and that's how, that's how that went so. oh <laughs> damn the pity vote that's bad yeah yeah I don't yeah that was not a not a good day um, I'm not very good at talking uh, I don't know why I keep putting myself in positions to make an ass of myself with my Flappy gums, but uh, you know it's uh, <laughs> the only way yeah. to get better. Am I right? I never, uh, I never did. I actually, so we had a, uh, I think it was like seventh grade. We had uh, Halloween day. Everybody wore like costumes or whatever, and each homeroom elected <sighs> one person to be in like that grade's costume contest at lunch, and you had to like get up and walk a lap around the lunchroom or whatever. Well, my homeroom was small. I was like the only person who dressed up. So I won mine. I wasn't going to go up there, but I went up there 
And they did the votes off of like cheers. And I remember they got to me and it was like, you could have heard a fucking cricket in there. Like nobody made any sort of noise for Mm. me until people started laughing at me. And to make things worse, I was in one of those fucking morph suits that looked like a crash test dummy. (laughs) <laughs> and I remember later that day, I went to zip it up to show somebody to zip my hair in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And they had to like pry the thing open to get uh, my hair out of it. Uh, so that was just a bad day. Um, God, I embarrassed myself a lot in school. And like, I wish I could remember. I flipped a disc. I think I told that story on the podcast in the fifth grade trying to get a pencil. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I rolled the desk over and it <laughs> felt like the fucking legs were straight up and it was on top of me. Uh, Oh, I was on the school morning show. Did y'all have a morning show? (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, it was on closed circuit TV. And this was like fifth grade, I think. And uh, I went in there and there was like a blank on the script. And you're like, hey, my name is, uh," like, I'd be like, my name's Travis. And then you'd go, and then Cozy would go, and I'm Cozy. Well, I got up there and I was anchoring it. And I just started reading through real quick. And I go, good morning. My name is Travis and I'm. (laughs) <laughs> and i just sat there and i remember like staring at the paper like not even at the camera just staring at the paper and like my brain just would not comprehend that that was the other person's line um and eventually like eventually we all pieced it together after like what felt like five minutes of me staring at the paper it was probably 10 seconds but uh just be s- staring at it like a fucking moron where's that co-anchor at he needs to help you out yeah i don't remember what the hell uh their deal was but i don't know there wasn't a bright bunch i can tell you up there if they had me if i was the lead anchor obviously there wasn't uh there was a lot of bad uh (laughs) bad candidates up there and i'm trying to before i move on i'm trying to think and make sure there's nothing else because i dude i know i made an ass out of myself in school quite a bit yeah Uh, yeah Um, i have a lot of suppressed memories one that one leaked through but uh, that was to be fair that was probably about the worst (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I never really put myself in that position to like embarrass myself in front of it. A- oh God, I had suppressed one and it just came back up, and I don't know if I should tell it. Oh, you I'm don't have tell to. It. Okay, no, I'm gonna tell it. Fuck it, because like at the end of the day, it don't matter because it was sixth grade. So sixth grade, uh, I had PE, and this was the first time in PE there was like a locker room and we actually changed clothes because we were getting to the age where we'd start like stinking real bad, you know? Mm. So uh, sixth grade, I go in there. First day of school, we didn't have to change. We just go in there for like an orientation style thing about PE. And uh, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, they're like, we're going to change all that. Well, I like I had worn boxer briefs before, but I also had worn uh, less than boxer briefs. Not nothing, but... <laughs> I guess the kids would call them tidy whities but anyway, <laughs> ah, man. I didn't really think, and my mom damn sure didn't think, and I still hold this against her to this day. <laughs> she set me up for failure here. <laughs> she sent me to school in tidy whities on my first day of actually dressing out in PE, and I remember going in there and seeing everybody dropping their pants, and everybody in there was wearing boxers or boxer briefs, and I like I didn't know. Like I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I can't not dress out. I'll get a, I won't get a grade, but I can't let these guys see me in tidy whities. So immediately I go over to the, uh, there were like bathroom stalls in there, and I'm like, I'll just change in the stall. Nobody will notice. Well, that's where all the fat kids went. <laughs> so oh, back man. then I was like all skin and bone. So like all the fat kids were in the stalls because they didn't want everybody seeing their man boobs. So I'm like, dude, I'm fucked. So I went over to the showers. And start changing in there. And of course, a whole nother group of kids come in there and they have to start changing over there. So basically, by the end of it, everybody saw me wearing tidy whities And I was having to like come up with a story as to why I was wearing tidy whities And it wasn't a good story. Nobody believed it. <laughs> that was my last uh, clean pair, man. Yeah, like I I like I don't know what I I I, I don't know what I was saying. Like <laughs> I was I should have told him I had a medical condition or something that required me to wear tidy whities but I <laughs> I don't remember what story I gave, but it damn sure didn't sell and uh, my mom had to go buy me some boxer briefs immediately and uh, by the next day though i was good and for the most part everybody forgot about it honestly yeah. i don't remember like nobody really gave me that's the thing man like everybody forgets like there's some stuff people still talk about like people just talk about like if you do something really fucking stupid um 
but <laughs> but uh like nobody really remembered me as the kid who shit himself in fourth grade or wore tidy whities <laughs> in sixth grade like all that stuff passed yeah um, that was a sixth grade problems right there Fuck yeah sixth grade whities. god almighty tidy whities though man i i don't know what the hell we were thinking um but yeah, that was uh, that was really embarrassing. That was like one of those like where you get hot and the back of your neck starts sweating. You're so embarrassed. <laughs> you know that feeling? You ever get that? <laughs> I did in the seventh grade once. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was gonna melt. <laughs> yeah, that's God Almighty, dude. I, I didn't see. You've never told me that story. Yeah, I haven't told um, a lot of people that story. Now. I was in an Uber in Colorado Springs one time, and I had a similar situation. I forget what I was trying to say to the guy, but it was like my parting remarks as I was getting out of the car, and I just locked the hell up and started like <laughs> I was like. Gick, 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 gick. <laughs> I know that happens. I remember the fucking uh, Waffle House and uh... <laughs> that's exactly the kind of moment that was, man. Dude, that was the funniest damn thing I've ever seen. I forget what you were trying to say. What was it? Can't have fork plastic or something like it was. I don't know. I'll have to go back and listen to the podcast that night because I remember oh. I got the quote right then. But oh my God, you locked the hell up on that lady. <laughs> that was funny. I just, I didn't even see it coming either. It just like I knew what I was gonna say. I knew what I wanted, and it just I started talking, and it just it, it man, it, it went wrong. It went all wrong. <laughs> I don't get it. it. Went south in a hurry. Oh man, but, yeah. man, waffle. Oh man, I want some waffle house now. But uh, all right, moving on. <laughs> that might be that the record. Good. That might be the record for the longest tangent of a, uh, a mailbag question. <laughs> That was a damn good question, though. And I know yeah. I didn't touch all of it. I'm sure I'll think of something later. But Yeah, same. Um, Eminem Cup Series writes, It is currently 3 a.m. when I'm typing this. Anyway, I figured I would tell you guys a funny story. One time, one of the times I went to Texas Motor Speedway, we were sitting next to this young couple who were hammered. They left, and about five minutes later, I saw them walking back up to their seats. They went full Jesse Awuji and kept their foot in it, walking up those stairs uh. and face planted right in front of me. Beer went flying and they went flying. Everything I was seeing was better than the race. They were both okay, but I thought it was funny. My real question <laughs> is, what is your favorite paint scheme that your favorite driver ever ran? Also, thanks for the great podcast. Now I'm going to bed. Sincerely, Blake. Um, for me, I don't remember it running uh, because I was so young, but that uh, the uh, car junior ran in the 01 uh, Daytona the the 400 the yeah. Pepsi I guess it's Pepsi 400 yeah at the, time. the MLB uh, All Star race uh, yeah. yeah 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 that's uh that's probably my favorite junior scheme oh man that's tough because uh, Dale Junior always had a lot of one off paint schemes we we're both mm -hmm. Dale Junior fans so um that's tough man uh that's why I hate these kinds of questions because like he only drove about like 560 paint schemes in his career <laughs> so you know <laughs> uh obviously to watch all of his races but i watched a whole shitload of them and they kind of run together after a while so um oh shit man he had some really cool ones like uh with the mountain dew stuff um i was the thinking, retro mountain dew was pretty good i like that one. yeah um fuck man the uh the mountain dew kickstart car you ran out of fuel with in vegas that one year was cool yeah um fuck man there's so many of them I'm, i mean honestly he had some dude the uh Honestly, one of my favorite primary paint schemes he ever had was that, um, uh, what was it, 20, uh, uh, what was it, uh, was it 2016, 2015, uh, the nationwide car that had the silver all down the side of it. That car was yeah. clean as fuck. I love that yeah. car. Um, uh, other than that, though, dude, he always ran those, like, one-off paint schemes for the, uh, the Coke Zero 400. Uh, that was yeah. always, I always liked that. Uh, he always had some cool like camo shit going on or some sort the of the National Guard cars were always good when he'd have those. Yeah, um, and then he and had the those six hundred ones were always good too. Yeah, and then they always did something for like, the uh, fall Talladega race too. Amp, yeah, that's, yeah, that was what I was gonna bring up. When he had that orange amp car that year, I forget what year it was, but it was the, the front of it was orange, and I, I honestly don't remember what the back of it was, but it was that was a cool looking car. Yeah, he had some good ones, man. Uh, I'd like to. I have to punt through Jay skis for a while to to really get my favorite, I guess. But uh, yeah, man, that's uh, that was that was one bright side of being a Dale Junior fan, I guess. He always he, he was always looking good. Might have been in nineteenth place, but you know, it, it was, it was <laughs> he had some good cars. 
going back to to Blake's uh, first part of this email too. Me and Cozy got to see somebody bust their ass at Martinsville last time mm. we were there, and that was really funny. Uh, I got to see one in 2015 at Martinsville. Everybody, so we were sitting in the last row of the bottom section down there in turn one. Great view of Kins at the Wrecking Logano, by the way. It had been raining that morning, and everybody was climbing over. Not everybody, I wasn't, but a lot of people were climbing over the railing that was behind us to get down to the row. Well, this one guy tried, and he got up on top of the rail, slipped, feet went to the sky, and he landed flat on his back on the walkway, and it, like, you mm. could feel it in the grandstands. And like, literally, that man was embarrassed, I can tell you. Like, I didn't, like, he didn't really look embarrassed, but, like, 5,000 people watched him bust his ass right there in that little section. It was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, what happened the last time we were there? I don't remember that. Go. It might not have been last time. It was might have been time before last, because I think Brody might have been there. Yeah, uh, I, I think I know. It was when it uh, rained, snowed shit, right? No, it, it. I think it had rained or something, but I don't. It wasn't the snow time, because oh, uh, this guy was walking up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, it, yeah, I, think it, I remember that. It just got out from under him, and <laughs> they backed her into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> man, it feels like so long since we've been to Martinsville. Man, God, I can't wait I to go back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Cameron Man writes. Hey, Travis and Cozy, I'm a Bucks fan, and I was wondering how y'all feel about Derrick Rose. Do you think he deserves a ring after all the shit he's been through? Oh, I absolutely. Said. Sure. I, I'm a new basketball fan. I know the name. I don't know what he's been through, but if Cozy says so, I agree with it. Derrick Rose? Also, yeah, what's he been through? What's his thing? Uh, Derrick Rose was a monster when he came into the league. Uh, he played for the. He got drafted by the Chicago Bulls, and uh, he... Uh, he, it looked like he was going to lead the Bulls to greatness, and he uh, there was a playoff game, I think it was against Philly, and it was like they were up by a good bit, and he was still in the game, and he tore his ACL on a play or whatever, just tore up his knee, and then ever since that, it's just been one injury after another, and he's never been the same. But he's kind of like kind of coming back to, I mean, he's older now, obviously. It's been a while, but uh, he's actually like playing pretty good now Uh for the stage of career you know he's at so uh absolutely i always liked watching derrick rose he's a fucking monster and uh I, i'd like to see him get a ring i think it'd be really fucking cool is he correct me if i'm wrong or like <laughs> i don't know who he like i know the name but i can't like put a is he the one with the triangle on his throat triangle on his throat yeah like the tattoo that like leads to a triangle or whatever right there in the middle of his fucking adam's apple uh, I don't know about his personal tattoos, to be honest. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, who's he, like, who's he play for now? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I think he played, he played for the Pistons. I don't know if he's still playing with the Pistons there or not. Let's find out. <laughs> Derek Rose, uh, for the Detroit Pistons. All right, well, there you go. What's his throat look like? Does he have a triangle? <laughs> Oh, he does have a triangle. Hey, look okay, there. Yeah, that is the guy. I was was this say of. Godspeed? All right, I didn't. I, don't know. I didn't know he I had that know. there. Uh, he, I don't know what that's for. I don't know when he got that. He didn't have it. There's some pictures of him with the Bulls. He didn't have that shit going on. I don't know when he got that shit. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> since I seen Derrick Rose, but all right. Well, I mean, I just got into shit recently, so I don't know what the fuck it says or the story behind it. But <laughs> he's got a triangle on his throat, so I know that. Um. All right, next question. Hunter Devine writes, when it comes to attempting to create a penis during post-race celebrations, do y'all prefer the dick and balls method where you make the dick and then the balls? Or do you prefer the, ball the balls and dick method where you make the balls and then the dick? Also, what upcoming games or already released games are you guys wanting to get your hands on? Personally, I'm excited for the new Lego Star Wars game. What are wow. the odds? We were just talking about that. Wow. That's oh, the one yeah. I was looking at, I guess. Yeah, the Skywalker yeah. saga thing. Yeah. What the fuck? Why has it been delayed? This is 2020. It ain't 2020 no more. Um, I'm Googling that shit. I don't, I don't win enough. I've never done a dick and ball. When, the last time I won like a points event of any kind, it was like almost, damn getting close to like a year ago uh and i i just i try to do the little fast spin thing like uh joey logano does that's fun to me so cozy's the dick and balls guy so you have to ask him his method frick yeah, it says 2021 now and that's not good because it doesn't come with a month or a day so all right sometime this year i guess um yeah so dick and balls uh usually i go dick and then uh you go balls at the end uh, i haven't tried balls and dick but you know, once I get the dick and balls down, like, 
fully down, I think, to a point where I think I, I got it figured out and it looks pretty good every time. Then I'll probably switch it up and try doing it that way. Um, yeah. I wish I won more, too. <laughs> I win enough, but I, I need to win more. I'm so pissed off I, I lost that fucking core race last night. As, su- as stupid race, it didn't really mean a whole lot, but fuck, man. I, I hate losing shit. I like yeah. drawing dick and balls. <laughs> At least you didn't wreck on lap 50 or whatever I did. <laughs> I still self spun. Uh, oh, did you self spin? I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, I mean, I had already lost the race, but uh, we restarted and I restarted second and I just uh, I just full throttled the next corner and it didn't stick. I wanted to get yeah. a big run and see if I could get it back, but it, it didn't happen. So. Dude, I had a rough go at it. I left it in fourth gear on the start, got run over by Davin later, and then uh keenan net coded me and my dumb ass went down into the next corner still sideways and overcorrected direct both of us <laughs> i still had a quick repair but i was like i just i ain't in the mood yeah i feel you i just god almighty i just i don't know <laughs> uh, i wasn't doing too good last night but anyway uh your method of dick and balls do you prefer the the balls then the dick or the dick then the balls Oh, yeah, uh, dick, then balls. But, again, I haven't tried the balls and dick method, so we'll see. All right. Uh, for me, upcoming games, I don't really – I don't know. I'm going to play uh, Indiana Jones Lego – or Lego Indiana Jones now, so that's good. Oh, man, this is a meaty one. All right, J.D. Legate writes, Sup, fellas, and Spanky. Uh, what is one track on the schedule that doesn't have lights that you'd like to see get lights and host night races? For me, I feel that New Hampshire would be cool under the lights because it would give off more of a short track feel. I agree. Uh, Dover's one I think would look cool at night. Um, yeah, New Hampshire would be a good one. Let's just like, I mean, any shitty tracks that suck during the day, let's give them lights. I think every track, like it, we're getting to the point where every track should have lights, but I don't think every night, every race should be a night race. Like I don't think, like I wouldn't want a Dega night race because, like, the whole thing of Dega is like the Saturday night on the boulevard and then the race the next day. But yeah, it does suck. Like, there's no reason that if it rains, you know, and they're just shy of halfway, that they have to call the race at you know five in the afternoon because they know they're going to be dry and it's going to be getting dark before they could finish the race. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we should be able to finish the races on the weekends they're assigned to. So. I think every track should get lights, but Dover's one I think would look pretty cool with lights. Dale Jr. tweeted that one. It's been years ago now, but he tweeted that Dover was getting lights or some shit. He posted some pictures of some poles and shit. And got yeah, everybody. I, you remember that? Yeah, I forget what they were doing, but they they debunked that. Unfortunately, that would have been cool though. Dover. Yeah. I mean, you can't tell me Dover if they could put like red eyes and Miles the Monster out there, oh, you man. know, and like they can light up. That'd be fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, question two, have you ever had any interactions with security at the track before? I know Cozy rants about the yellow shirts at IMS and his vlogs. I have a funny one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know you needed some security help to get your fucking keys back at Bristol. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that one. Yeah, those guys were cool, though. Um, they were really cool. I had like a damn... I spent half the race talking to that one guy. We were yeah. telling old stories about trips we'd been on and places we've <laughs> seen. I'm glad he that worked cool out because that fucking we got through like the first stage and he still hadn't come back yet. I was getting worried. Yeah, no, I was just enjoying it. They, the other guy though, wouldn't let me out. He went looking for him himself because yeah, their policy was you idea. couldn't go out. Yeah, and I was like, dude, you're not gonna find him. And the guy I was talking to knew that, but I was like, whatever. So I made the most of it. And we just sat there and shot the shit. Saw a guy almost get arrested which was really funny because they wouldn't let him bring his cooler in. So he decided, all right, I'm just going to go in with my cooler anyway. <laughs> Gave up on the little security thing. And they told him they were going to tase him, yeah, but they didn't have to tase him. My thing was I drove my grandmother's car to Martinsville. Uh, she lives in Martinsville and I had ridden with my parents up there. I was actually coming to meet you to get a G27 so I could race ride car uh, mm. at my grandmother's house. Well, uh, my grandfather uh has a handicap thing in there because he's got like back problems and stuff so anyway i wasn't intending on doing this but whatever i was coming to see you and uh no this was actually a different time i wasn't coming to see you i was going Mm -hmm. up there to watch uh i don't remember what i was doing up there but either way parking and traffic was rough they started signaling me over somewhere else, and then it hit me. I was like, oh, I got this handicap thing, and I was like, well, I can't turn around now, so I might as well send it because I'm going to get good parking and potentially a golf cart ride. And 
So I get up there and I drive all the way back around and I get to the the lot up there and this big old sheriff's deputy stops me and comes walking up to the car and says he's going to need some to see some paperwork. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh boy. <laughs> this is this is not going to go well." <laughs> and I was like, "Uh, I don't have any paperwork, sir." <laughs> and uh he scolded my ass. He told oh. me I needed he he told me I needed to turn around promptly. And get oh. back over where I belong. But uh, he didn't word it like that, but he made me turn around right there in front of everybody. Um, but it really was not my intentions. I was not trying to manipulate the system. It was just they waved me in that way and I couldn't turn around. So it's like, okay, this is good. I lucked into this. And then asshole deputy guy ruined it. Um, we got yelled at at Martinsville last time we were there because we stayed after practice too long. Remember that cop came up here and yelled at us, told us to get out of there? Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, he came up there. He's like, "Y'all gotta go." Oh man, well, fuck you too. Fuck you, dude. Yeah, fuck you, guy. Um, oh, remember when we sm- snuck down to the drivers' meeting? And uh, <laughs> I can't believe they, I can't believe we got away with that. We snuck down to the drivers' meeting a couple years ago at Martinsville, and this guy was checking everybody's passes and kicking them out left and right. And not really left and right, but he had turned several people away with that stuff. And before it was all said and done, my ass was standing front row down there next to this guy right outside the tent, <laughs> having a conversation with him. And I didn't even have a fucking pass to be down there. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can't think of anything else. Ah, uh, oh, the whole traffic guy. That oh, guy. Oh, fuck that guy. That guy needs to be... Well, I ain't gonna say that. But that guy needs... A talking to he <laughs> thought he was a fucking like he thought he was billy badass down there and he was just a glorified crossing guard wasn't a cop wasn't anything he looked like he worked in like the accounting department of martinsville speedway and they threw him out there with a fucking bullhorn and he was trying to direct traffic <laughs> and tell people where they needed to be and literally everybody was laughing at him Ugh. people started memeing him up there at the end whole traffic yeah, yeah everybody yeah anytime a car would get anywhere close everybody'd start yelling whole traffic <laughs> Dude, that guy, I have a video of him where I zoomed in on his face and he looked all flustered. Oh, yeah. I like people that get into positions like that and they start trying to handle shit and it goes south. The fucking, uh, uh, the, the, the question mentioned the, uh, the yellow jackets at IMS, man. Some of them are bastards, I'll tell you that. But to be fair, IMS is so fucking big that, uh, you know, you get a lot of them in there. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so the, uh, they're, they're pretty well known around, uh, you know, folks who go to the track just these motherfuckers to wear these yellow jackets and they call them yellow jackets but um yeah the uh i don't really have any bad uh like one-on-one experiences with them i guess uh i'm i'm a law-abiding citizen i don't i don't try to get away with crazy shit unless we're sneaking into a driver's meeting or something but um other than that uh the, <laughs> the one story i do have about a yellow jacket at ims is probably the funniest thing uh i've ever ever encountered at ims and uh, it's one of those you kind of had to be there moments. I know I've probably told you this at some point, but for those listening, uh, oh, dude, I, uh, the fun thing about, uh, Indianapolis, the Indianapolis 500 is just all the shit that goes into it beforehand. Uh, so they have a lot of practice days and stuff and all those practice days, most people don't give a shit about. So it's not, you don't get like the full, like, you know, everybody's packed in there for qualifying and obviously the race, but the practice days are usually pretty just kind of mellow and and people show up here and there and you know it's easy it's a lot easier just to walk around and experience the whole thing uh without everybody you know all pancaking and shit during the big events but um yeah so anyways i got there early one morning and i just like there's my body doesn't like waking up early in the morning um and uh i i think i made the mistake of drinking coffee that morning and i just can't drink coffee it just it tears me apart uh like really badly it makes me like endure some really bad hershey squirts anyways i got the track really early and i had to shit i had to shit really bad and i was there at like seven in the morning or some shit i don't know what time the track opens i was there really early i got there before the track opened and um there's obviously the track's got a lot of tunnels and shit and a lot of ways you can get in the track uh there was nobody at the entrance i went to so i just fucking went in <laughs> and uh yeah so i was why of course it's a big fucking track so i had to, I had to walk all the way to the to the uh, bathrooms and uh the bathrooms i went to were on top of the the little garages there and uh i followed a yellow jacket in there (laughs) 
And uh, I guess we both had to do our morning business, fire, file our morning paperwork, if you know what I'm, if you catch my drift. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we uh, we walked in there. He him first. I walked in behind him, and I had to shit really badly. But uh, he, uh, <laughs> I remember he, <laughs> we were walking down the aisle, and he went to the left, and I went to the right. And when he walked in, I heard him walk in, and he's and uh, uh, the words of this yellow jacket, he said, "Oh, what the hell?" And I heard him smack the door back, <laughs> and he went to the next all over. <laughs> Took his business elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I was already I was already shitting wildly. To this day, though, I'm still so upset. I never checked on what the hell was in that stall, but it was enough to make him go, oh, what the hell? Just the way he said, oh, what the hell was the funniest shit I'd ever heard as I was shitting my brains out right across the fucking aisle. Um, oh, man, I still wish I, I <laughs> witnessed what the fuck was in there. But anyways, <laughs> I guess one of those you had to be there moments, but it was, dude, it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Just imagine the guy. Oh, what the it, the, the right. funnier part about it is he was an older guy, too. He was probably like 55, 60 years old, you know, white hair. You know, he's just kind of easing his way in there. And he goes, oh, what the hell? <laughs> 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 All right. Last question comes from Davis Libbins. Howdy, boys. I'll keep the questions. Not NASCAR related to spice shit up a bit. One, what is the worst movie you've ever seen in a theater? And did you walk out? Uh, I haven't seen one that was bad enough for me to walk out. I did go to one of the uh, Marvel movies with some friends. Didn't understand anything but the Spider-Man t- parts. I think it was Infinity War or Civil War. I don't remember which one it was. But I uh, I watched a Kansas NASCAR race on my phone <laughs> for most of it. Except the Spider-Man parts because I knew who Spider-Man was. Nice. What about you, Cozy? Uh, I actually walked out of a movie once. I was probably like six years old. Uh I don't know why, but my grandma took me to see a Harry Potter movie, and I didn't know anything about Harry Potter, nor did I give a shit, but I still went there anyways, and I thought it was stupid, so I left. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) And I had never watched Harry Potter after that until, was it I think it was two years ago, and I finally was just like, yeah, you know what? I've never actually watched Harry Potter all the way through, so I watched all the movies, and I was like, eh, it was all right. I just... uh, I don't know. Just watching it, they hype up Harry Potter to be this big motherfucker, and it takes like five movies for him to ever really do anything cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't he just a little nerd with a stick? I mean, basically, yeah. And then they just like, you know, they just kind of weasel their way through, and you know, everything works itself out. And then it takes like five movies, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, okay, I could use these fucking powers and shit. I just want to see him do some. I want to see some cool shit. You know what I mean? Anyways, the last two movies I thought were pretty cool. But uh, the rest of it was, uh, you know, it's had its moments, but it, it wasn't my favorite. But I need to read the books, but, you know, fuck reading. Oh, my God. They're like 800 pages, aren't they? Yeah, no, especially. Fuck fuck that shit. I don't even... Yeah. Uh, second question for him. Do y'all watch any other folks on YouTube? And if so, whomst? Um, <laughs> yeah. I watched this asshole who plays F1 and some NASCAR games. Um, and then I'm trying to think who else. Uh, I've been watching. I watch a little bit of Jeff Faviano. Um I watch, I don't know if Stool Scenes for Barstool counts, but that's on YouTube. I watch a good bit of that. Uh, I've been watching, this kind of counts more as Twitch, but I watch some of the stuff on YouTube. T Grizzly's been playing GTA role plays, uh, or a GTA role play server, uh, and it's really fucking funny. So I've been watching that. Uh, and then other than that, as far as youtube goes there's not really a whole lot i've been watching consistently right now but it's kind of seasonal we need to do that every once in a while we need to like update who we're watching i know you probably don't watch a lot of youtube but i watch there's times where i watch a lot oh there's this uh well the a and e youtube channel is really good because they upload like stuff from live pd and i love that and then there's this channel it's called like real world police and it's uh just body cams of cops so you can watch like hours of interactions with like stupid drunk people and stuff which is pretty good hmm. the uh yeah i get this question a lot i don't um i don't watch anybody <laughs> and I, I know it's kind of weird and i feel kind of like an asshole because i'm uh you know at least in my community i'm, I'm friends with a lot of you know uh people who do the same shit as me do career modes or stream a lot and you know do all this shit uh, and I try to support them as much as I can, but I just, I don't, I don't watch any YouTube like at all, unless it's like a link to something, 
to, like you'll send me or it's you know or something that, yeah i need to know how to do something and i'll pull it up there but like i don't watch anybody's content on youtube not really at all and there's a couple reasons for that sometimes i just don't care but most of the time i and especially in my field of things i i cannot watch anybody else play the same games as me because it just it uh i don't know how to explain it it just it kind of like uh, it kind of takes me away from the idea of things I want to do my way. Cause then, you know, if you start watching somebody else do this shit, then you kind of like start acting at, like them, you know what I mean? And you start kind of, yeah. you start kind of doing things a, a different way. And, um, I just, and especially if they do certain things, like if it's like F1, when that game came out, there's a lot of people play that fucking game. I didn't watch a single fucking bit of it. Cause I like to watch, I like to play the game and figure it out all myself, I guess that makes sense. Cause it's more authentic that way. And it's more fun for me because you know i don't know anything about the fucking game this uh this year's game with the my team stuff it brought in a whole bunch of shit and um you know i just didn't know anything about it so i just started playing it and i didn't i made sure not to watch anybody else's playthroughs and stuff and um you know i just i think it's more fun that way but um yeah i uh, <laughs> again i feel bad i know what if always roast me he's like you don't watch my videos i'm like yeah, i mean no <laughs> sorry <laughs> no i mean i get that like i 100 percent get that um and honestly like i don't watch there's like times where I'll watch a lot of stuff, but like usually my YouTube time is just like rabbit holes, man. Like just I'll watch a video that's on my recommended. And then next thing I know, I got two hours of just watching random shit. Don't know how I got there, but I got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, um, yeah, I don't really do that too much to be honest. Fail videos, uh, fail yeah, army. That's yeah. another one. I've watched them for years. I love watching people who do stupid stuff and hurt themselves. So, <laughs> Not necessarily, like, not hurt themselves bad, but just do stupid shit and, like, yeah, bust fall their ass off a little stuff. bit. Yeah. But, uh, then his third question What is the dumbest thing you've seen a kid do in class? I've seen a lot of people do stupid shit. Uh, <laughs> and I can't think of any of it at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know uh, why. The first thing that popped into my mind was watching a kid put a pencil in a f freezer. <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my head. He's a goofy kid. He just likes I to saw, fuck around with shit. Middle school, we had a kid snort salt. Really? Had that uh, in? Not good for him. Uh, <laughs> funny for the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> I oh, man. I can't, I'll have to get back to you on that one next week. I, I'll have to think. I'll have to do some digging. Because uh, I can't... I can't... Uh, allegedly, there were some kids I may or may not have been involved who... Uh, we or they, those kids went into a bathroom and dumped some chocolate pudding in one bathroom. There were like two stalls, put some, uh, well, there were three stalls, but we had one of us sit in one and then, uh, we dumped pudding in the next one. And then the third one, we put ketchup packets under the seat. So basically the plan was they'd see the first one was occupied, see the second one was full of shit. And then they'd go rush and sit down on the third one and get squirted with the uh, ketchup packets. That was uh, that wasn't stupid. That was just funny. Uh, <laughs> don't know. Don't don't really know much about those allegations, though. That you know may or may not have happened. So send your questions into the mailbag, askmoodhead at gmail dot com, and uh, hopefully next week we don't take an hour and a half. But that was a good mailbag. That's probably my favorite mailbag yeah, yet. Yeah, those yeah, were good yeah. questions. Usually we get a lot of stupid questions. Those weren't <laughs> stupid questions. Those were good questions. I like it. Uh, that was a good time. That was a good time. Yeah, just, uh, you know, sometimes people just go right to the fucking generic NASCAR questions, and it's like... So, uh, uh, what do you think, if they added one more degree of breaking and turned three in Atlanta, <laughs> what do you think that that would do? I don't fucking know, Tommy. <laughs> I, I don't have a fucking engineering degree. <laughs> Jesus. Those are the worst questions. Or, what are your thoughts on this guy making this move and having this race engineer? Like, you uh, think I fucking know? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or, or, man, I hate when people just go, thoughts on. Like, it, I have some thoughts on it. Like, I don't know if they mattered that much. ESPN would be paying me by now. Or probably not ESPN because they don't give a fuck about NASCAR. But Fox or somebody would be paying me. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well. I'll Son of a bitch. That gets me pissed. God, <laughs> All right. That's going to do us for this week's Gassles. Podcast is a good one. Hey, this is a real good one. Uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back probably next Wednesday unless we take another week off, which uh, I want, we're working on some guests. We're still working on it. We want to get some eventually. We're going to get pre on eventually. I know that. Um, 
I was thinking maybe if we uh, win the 24 this year, we'll get everybody on. We'll do a nice uh, celebra- celebratory gas podcast or something like that. We'll talk about our victory. But we got to yeah. win first, uh, and we haven't really even got our whole team together yet. So we got to work on that. That's coming up here soon. But, uh, yeah, you got anything uh, big coming up for the week? Uh, no, just more moon car racing. Oh, boy. Uh, well, if you're still listening, we got uh, the return of Rod Car this Friday night. Uh, oh, yeah, that too. And uh, I'll have the uh, fake 500 on Saturday, which I'm really excited for. It's going to be at 6 o'clock uh, with Rod Carr uh, the night before at 9. So uh, fun week of stuff. Uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, pod- oh, oh. I signed up for the uh, the Podium 500. I don't know if you did that as well. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, and there's like yeah. 500 people signed up. for so that, yeah. that should be fun. Yeah. When is that? Do you know? Not a fucking clue. All right, me either. Well, that's going to do us once again. I think I said it's the third time I said that now. <laughs> Appreciate y'all for listening. We can get the fuck out of here. All right, y'all take it easy.